It's good to be in the house of the Lord. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's some people that have the mentality that I was sad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But we don't need to be like that today. We just need to raise our hands and we just need to praise him and have a good time in the Lord. We're glad to have Michaela Hatfield with us here today. She's going to be singing here in just a few minutes and, and just take her liberties in the Lord. We're thankful for what the Lord's done. We've been here. How many months have we been here? We've been here since January. Count quick. Nine. Nine months we've been here. This is our nine-month anniversary. <laughs> we've done a whole bunch since then. We're sponsoring three uh, school ball teams here in the community, doing a whole lot. Uh, talking about getting a little bit involved with the uh, local festival and all that. The October Sky Festival that takes place in October um, out at Arrowhead Park in Oliver Springs. So we're looking uh, forward to getting into all that and all that we can do for the Lord. We have our Benefit Revival coming up this Thursday, and that's going to run from Thursday till Sunday. Uh, a lot of good preachers coming to that. Uh, it's taped right up there by the door. We're going to be putting them out around the area and the community uh, during the next few days. So, I mean, that's something to tell people about, something to come to. We've been doing a lot of work here in the church most recently, as you all know. We've got the roof patched. Um, John Haygood, I'm looking and I'm not seeing him, but maybe he'll be here later. He was up here vacuuming and everything. There was like some sawdust that had came through a crack or something in the roof. I'm like, that's because the work has been getting done. So it's patched and it's no longer going to leak on the sound system. Thank God that it didn't mess it up. We're thankful for that. Uh, we've been having uh, some work done downstairs. We're appreciative of Greg and Timmy for all that they've done. That room's starting to look real nice right when you get to the bottom of the steps, and soon we're going to be able to utilize that. But we're just thankful for God, and we're just here to have a good time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's open in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you would just move, that you would do a powerful and a mighty thing here today. We pray, God, that you would touch every heart, every mind, Lord, that you would just touch our worship, that you would anoint every song that's sung, every prayer that's prayed, Lord, at the word that's preached, God. We pray, Lord, that you would just work and that you would just move and that you would just touch us all and that you would come down into this place. Lord, we see that a lot of smiling faces, a lot of people have shown up, but God, we know that if you're not we know, God, if you're not here, then it ain't worth coming for what we came for. Hallelujah. We pray, God, that your presence would just come down and that you fill this place. We invite you here right now just to touch us, Lord, just to flow over this crowd, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
shiny. There's power in the blood. You know, there is wonder work and power in the blood of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah.
All unspoken, please signify that by the raising of your hand. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you would just move in all of these needs, Lord. You know them. You know the needs of our hearts. Maybe things that surpass words, God. But we pray, God, that you wouldn't just lop away even at the branches of these things, but that you would reach down to the very root, God, the very cause, the main thing, Lord, and that you would do that thing, God. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen us in our lives, Lord, that you would draw us close to you than we've ever been, that you would cause us to be an example, that you would cause us to be a light, that you would save those that are lost, that don't know you, that you would draw them, friends, family, Lord, Father, we pray, God, that you would just move and that you would just do something powerful, that you would work and that you would move in the leadership of this nation, Lord, that you would call Christians, Lord, as we know you call us, Lord, that you would draw us, Lord, to act more like you, Jesus, we pray that you would do all this in Jesus' name that you would overcome all these things, any sickness or any ailment, Lord Father, that we're calling out for, that you would reach your hand out and that you would touch those needs this very moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. This song says, while there's still time, that God is calling out to you. Thank you. 
he's calling out to each and every one of us while they're still coming. Amen. Eli, come on up here. This time we're going to take up a special love offering. Praise the Lord. Um, Kayla Hatfield, she's traveling around and she's she's just going all over the place. She's going to be in West Virginia and in Virginia. And I personally know how hard that, that is to do. Amen. It's a, it's a fight uh, sometimes to, to be out there in the road and, and uh, you go places and a lot of times you won't even get enough for gas money. So we, uh, we want to get good. Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray, God, that she would just move, that you would touch Michaela as she goes out and she travels. Lord, we pray, God, hallelujah, man, it shook down up here. We pray, God, that she would just move and that she would just help her as uh, she goes along, touch everyone who has to give, all those who have not.
you know, as I guess humans, you know, that's what we are. <laughs> as humans, we worry a lot, and we forget that the God that made this universe, that made this world, has everything in his hands, but yet he still knows our name. And we sit there and worry, you know, well, how is this going to get paid? How is this going to work out? In the end, God has it all in his hands. And that's... Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Isn't God good here today? Aren't you glad for God? Praise God. That was uh, that was good. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn into the book of Zechariah. Um, into the, uh, where are we at? Is it the, the ninth chapter? We'll begin reading here at the eighth verse in a minute. I'll wait for everybody to get there. But Zechariah chapter nine and verse eight. I'm so glad for God here today. I'm glad for people that get up and that they sing for the Lord. Aren't you glad for that here today? Amen. Praise God. So that, that's that's a wonderful thing. I was hearing a, a story on Michaela that she's going to be up on stage and that they're uh, they're giving her three hours to the stage. That's that's horrible. Three hours. That. I, I would I would fear that. My mom would would fear such a thing. We've been up at places and. And uh, I said, who does a three-hour set? I said, is she Pink Floyd? Is she Jimi Hendrix? Who is she? I, I mean, I, I don't know who does a three-hour set. I'm like, that's a crazy long set to do and all that. But uh, praise the Lord. In the Bible, in the book of um, Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 8, the Word of God says, And I will encamp about mine house because of the army, because of him that passeth by, and because of him that returneth. And no oppressor shall pass through them any more. For now have I seen mine eyes. Verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just in having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass, upon a, a colt, uh, the foal uh, of an ass. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you would just move and that you would just sow a word deep into our hearts here today. We thank you for all that you've done, for how you've been with us, for how that you've strengthened us. And we pray, God, that this word would just encourage us and that we would take it through this day and through this week. In Jesus' name, amen. What a powerful word of scripture. The Bible begins to tell us and it begins to declare that a king is coming. Amen. About 2,000 years ago, people began to lay down their coats and, and worship the Lord Jesus Christ as he passed through a town on a little donkey that had never been ridden before. And the people that didn't have the money, that they didn't have a coat because a coat was a hard thing to come by at that time. It was something that was really costly to have that. Those people that were that poor, they began to climb up the palm trees and they began to grab palm branches and they began to throw them in, at, at, at his feet for him to, to go and to walk over and they began to worship him. And they began to cry, Hosanna, Hosanna. Now we know in, in, in Hebrew that Hosanna it means save us. And these people believed that Jesus Christ was going to be their king. And they began to worship him. And they began to worship him like he was a king. For so many years, the Roman Empire had oppressed the Jewish people. They had laid siege to them. Their government had taken over. They had said this is the way that it's going to be. We read about people in, in, in the Bible times, and maybe it doesn't come to our full understanding if you don't know the history, that there were people that were zealots. And they would stand against the Roman government. They hated the Roman government. Barabbas was a man that hated the Roman government. We see that one of the disciples that, she, that Jesus uh, chose, Simon, as a zealot. He was a zealot. The Bible says, and he was a man that hated the Roman government and for all that they did and for how they broke the back of the of, of God's people and how they oppressed them and how they kept them down into bondage. And they said, finally, a king is coming. He's riding through the streets. And they wanted him to do it their way. They wanted him to come with a sword. They wanted him to take the throne. They wanted him to establish a worldly power and a worldly government. And they wanted him to take take the role of Caesar and to knock Caesar off his throne. And all of a sudden, we're back up on top again. And things are going on. And things are going right. And we've got a change going on. Uh, and, and it's the change that we want. But a lot of times, when you think that there's something that you want, you don't know what you've got until you go ahead and you get it. Amen? And the Bible says that they were there and they were praising the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were crying out to him, believing that he was a Savior. Believing that he would save them. How ironic it is that these people, that they needed saving. But they really didn't even know what they needed saving from. That this world had a chain of bondage upon them and upon their spirits and upon their souls. That it drugged them down so. 
so deep and they were so blind because they rejected the light. The Bible tells us this. It says in John, in the book of John, it says that a light has come into the world, but it tells us that the condemnation is this when you read down a few verses. It says that there's people that refused the light when it came into the world because their deeds were wicked and they loved the darkness more than the light. And that's why they rejected it because you know when you shine light on something, you see what's going on. You see that thing for what it really is. You see what that situation really is. You see where that stumbling block and where those problems and where the, what the reality really is. And Jesus Christ came down and they were blinded by all their aspirations, by all their dreams, by all their carnality. And they said, man, we got a king. we got a champion that's come that's going to rise up against the enemy, that's going to wage war. Hallelujah. That's going to bring a sword. Hallelujah. I want to let you know that at that time, at that point in history, hallelujah, that a king, hallelujah, had roamed down that street. Aren't you glad? Amen. The word of God prophesies it from the time of Adam that God had a way. When it looked like man, man, man has fallen, it's all over, it's game over, there's no way to reset, there's no way out. God said, I have a plan, hallelujah, and I've made a provision. And we begin to see that mirrored, hallelujah. Over and over again, I was reading a, uh, like a daily devotional by Smith Wigglesworth, and I was reading about that, and he said, you know, he began to think when God had put the angel with the fiery sword there in the Garden of Eden, keeping them out of that Garden of Eden. He said, I wanted to believe in my life when I read that, that maybe God's put some angels in my life that are keeping me away from the places that I don't need to go back to, to the places that I don't need to go to, to, to those things that are holding me back from that stuff, hallelujah, that's bad. God, hallelujah, a champion came down here to this world, and he came to break every chain of bondage, hallelujah. The word of God tells me, it says, when the enemy, when he comes in, uh, raging in, it says that like a flood, that God will raise up a standard, hallelujah, against him. Aren't you glad that we have a God? like that, a champion like that. The Word of God tells us right here again in verse 8, it says that I will encamp about my house because of the army. Because the enemy is so great, right? Because of him that passeth by, amen, and because of him that returneth, amen, and no oppressor shall pass through them anymore. I want to let you know that I've read the book of Nehemiah and it was a hard and it was a terrible time, wasn't it? Because this man had a vision to do something for God and every enemy that he had, everything that the devil could throw against him rose up to stand against him and fight, right? There were people that would come along and they would laugh at him and they would pick at him and they would say, hey man, you're not going to be able to do this. Where was God in that? Why, why didn't God just stop him? I want to let you know that he heard. And that he saw the Bible says right here. It says in the book of Zechariah that the enemy came. And that I'm coming because I saw it with my own eye. And they're not going to come around anymore. Praise God. He said that in the Bible we read about that. And how they began to harass them and persecute them. They began to threaten them. The threat became greater. The threat became more real. And the people, they just they just wouldn't leave alone. They were like a fly that you swat your hand at and it'll fly away and it just keeps buzzing back. But the threat was more real and the threat was more apparent. Because as we read on and on how they had tried to stop it with decrees, how they had tried to stop it with taunting them, how they had tried to stop it with harassing them, we began to see that the threat of physical violence became so great, the Bible says, that as these people were building the walls of God's city, that they had to have a sword in one hand and they had to have a tool in the other. The Word of God says that Satan seeks to devour us like a ravenous lion. A lion isn't something that just lays back and doesn't do anything. A lion is something that will take you down, that will drop you, that he'll kill at the first sign of weakness. He'll, uh, he'll drop you and he'll kill you. He'll stalk you, that thing will, a lion will. They'll watch and they'll wait. And they'll want to wait until you get down to the water hole. They'll want to wait until they see some kind of something going on and you're walking with a little bit of a limp, a little bit of a hobble. They'll wait until you're all alone. Nobody else is around you and you don't have any kind of cover around you. And a lion will come out and get you. Hallelujah. But we have a God, glory to God, that 
is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. He's bigger than any devil that could ever come against us. He's bigger than any army that could ever come against us. Amen. I like in the word of God where the man of God, where the enemy had come against him, where they stood against him. And the, and the, the prophet's servant said, you know, I'm terrified. I'm so afraid because they're here. And he said, there's more with us that are against us. And he opened his eyes to show him that God Almighty had sent a host of angels. Hallelujah. To encamp about him. The Bible says that the Lord is going to encamp about you. Hallelujah. The word of God says that he'll send his angels to encamp around his people. That he can put a hedge around us so high. I like it the 91st Psalm where it begins to talk. And it says that there's a thousand that's going to drop at my right hand. And there's ten thousand that's going to drop at my left hand. And yet here I am in the midst of all and in the midst of all this struggle, in the midst of all this turmoil, and I'm still standing through it all. There has to be a reason why, man. There has to be a reason why I'm going through gunfire like Steven Seagal in a Steven Seagal movie, and I'm not being hit, amen. That I keep standing, and I keep fighting, and I keep pressing on. There has to be something more to that, that when you get standing on of an ass, it's not by Samson's own means that he wins. It's not by Samson's own devices that he wins. But it's a God thing, amen. We have to sometimes recognize that it's a God thing. Sometimes that's the only way we get through. I remember when I was 16 years old and I was working my first job. It was at Wendy's uh, restaurant down there in Harriman. And I was kind of aggravated. I was kind of in a, in a bad mood. And I was driving home and... Couldn't have been going too fast because I, I had just went under the, the interstate bridge. Does everybody remember where the old Cracker Girl used to be? You know, the Mexican restaurant now, or it's Ruby Tuesdays now, isn't it? But uh, that, there used to be a Cracker Girl there. Well, anyway, I hopped over and I get in, in the left-hand lane because y'all, everybody that knows me knows that I don't like to drive in the right lane, right? There's no right because I'm going to pass somebody eventually anyway. But I mean, the pedal wasn't necessarily all the way down to the floor. I'm, I'm just cruising along in my first car, my little Nissan Pulsar NX T-Top. Real cute little red car. There, uh, there came along this 81-year-old man in a Dodge Dynasty. If you don't know cars, it's substantially a bigger, it's a, it, it, it's a boat, isn't it? I mean, it's a behemoth. I'm in this little four-cylinder and he's in this metal monster machine car. And he decides he doesn't see anything coming when my car is bright red. He doesn't see anything coming. So he doesn't even need to stop in the median. That's just ridiculous. He wants to go into Cracker Barrel and get his biscuit. And he hit me so hard. I, didn't, I never saw it coming. You know, probably because he wasn't stopped, right? He hit me so hard that he knocked me from the left lane across the right lane into the shoulder of the road. The front of the car all along the side was crushed in. It was raked up. It was ripped up. The back of the car was crushed in. It was raked up. It was ripped up. But over the door, it's like it had just slid over the door. I believe that that same invisible hand, hallelujah, that wrote upon the wall, in the book of Daniel, that that hand was right there with me that very day, that the hand of God has been with us so many times. How, aren't you glad that the king showed up, amen, that that hand of God, hallelujah, has been with us in times of our life when it, it's been dire or it's been un, unexpected, and maybe you didn't even realize that he was there, but I'm glad that the king decided to show up. I'm glad that we have a king, hallelujah, that came world, that we serve a God that, that is in godless places, hallelujah, that, that the prisons can't keep him out, and, and the schools, they say they want to keep him out, but if God wants to go in the door, hallelujah, he's going to go in the door, and all the bars and all the honky-tonks, they want to say that, that they want to keep him out, but hallelujah, when God decides to show up and do something, there's no devil, hallelujah, that can stop him, there's no politician that can stop him, there's no government that can stop him. Aren't you glad to be a child? The Bible tells me that he'll encamp, hallelujah. He says that I'm going to encamp. I'm going to go there to my people and to my place, and I'm going to encamp around them. Isn't it good to be a child of God? That doesn't mean that he just shows up. That means that he shows up and that he stays there, hallelujah. Amen? Aren't you glad? 
I'm thankful for the Lord here today. There were people that they didn't recognize that when Jesus had shown up all the things uh, of who he was and everything, they would come for the miracles. They would come for a good time. The Bible tells you that all the time about a story of Jesus. These same people, and that always aggravates me on Palm Sunday, these same people that worship the Lord, Jesus said that there's people that worship me with their lips, but in their hearts they're far from me, that went down and that they worship him. These were the same people that were crying for his blood there a week later. These were the same people that were crying that he would hang on that cross a week later. There were These were these same people that when Pilate washed his hands and said, I don't want anything to do with the blood of this just man. They said, let his blood be on our hands and on the hands of our children. They had a problem, didn't they? And he came to solve the problem and they turned him away because they hated who he was and they hated what he was and they refused to see him as he was and if they did they wouldn't want any part of it because they wanted to hang on to their junk I read about the man that Jesus came upon in the Bible it says that he was a rich young ruler and he said I've kept all the ten commandments I've walked according to the, the ways that God would have me to walk to but Jesus being Jesus looked in this man's heart of hearts and he saw that this man had a problem and his problem was that he had his stuff and his things were an idol that was built up in his life and if he could just get rid of his stuff and his junk because it was a problem for this guy I mean he held it up there you know people like that don't you there's people who will kill you over their car there's people who will kill you over their stuff. It's more valuable than anything. And Jesus said, if you just sell it all and if you give all your stuff to the poor, just get rid of it. Get it out of your hands. Get rid of it. Get it gone. You don't need that anymore. Come and follow me. Well, praise the Lord. He would have been one of the twelve, wouldn't he? He would have taken the place of Judas. They wouldn't have had to uh, cast lots in the book of Acts and, and Matthias take that slot. But he would have been there after Judas had committed suicide. He would have been there in his stead. Wow. I mean, what a thing that this Jesus didn't dispute him. He didn't say, no, you haven't. This man had did everything that he said he would do. But Jesus came to him and he shined the light on him. And because he wanted to save him. He wanted to save him from the thing that would destroy him. And when this man was given the opportunity, hallelujah, to choose Jesus or to choose the world, the Bible says that he walked away with a sorrowful look on his face. When the king of glory came along and when he stayed there with Judas for three years, he stayed there with Judas. And every single day he gave Judas the purse, the only one that had a problem with stealing money of the disciples. He gave him the purse so he would have to stare at that thing, at that money that would have eventually destroy him and he can choose do I want the money or do I want God do I want the world or do I want God do I choose this thing or do I choose God Demas who walked with the apostle Paul and preached with the apostle Paul and went to prison with the apostle Paul the apostle Paul said Demas has forsaken me because he loved the things of the world more than the things of God and he's went off to Thessalonica to be in those things. He said that there's some people that walk with us, but they're not of us. Hallelujah. Because one day they're going to get up and leave because they love this junk and the things in the world more than the things of God. God will shine a light and he will put the thing in front of you and show you you're going to have to face this and you're going to have to overcome this and you're going to have to cry out to me to save you from this thing and get away from it or you're going to have to choose it and get away from me. Hallelujah. There is a king that knows that the enemy is going to be coming around. That the enemy is going to be showing up. And all of a sudden when he shines a light. Because he is the light. Amen. Hallelujah. And he comes down on the scene. We can say I choose you Lord. I want you to stay with me. I want you to come in my life. I want you to be my life. I mean, that's really what it's all about isn't it? I'm not, it's not just a Sunday thing. And it's not just a Wednesday thing. I know that's new for a lot of people nowadays. If you talk about a Wednesday thing, it's like, what's that? We don't do that anymore. I, 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 I've never known of that. Revival's a new concept for some people. You don't hear about revivals like you used to anymore. 
if you have revival, you're, I, I think you're trying to say that you think you might need to be revived, amen? That you might want to be fired up. That you might not be all there. God forbid that we shine a light on that, right? And say that I'm not perfect. That, that, I, that I'm not everything that I should be. That I've not reached the highest plateau. But that I need to cry out to God and I need to reach up to that hand. That same hand that was there when that car plowed into my car that saved me. That I need to reach out to that hand so he can lift me up to the place where he wants me to be. So he can position me in the place where he wants me to be. Hallelujah. Rather than me being content with the place that I am. Amen. Aren't you glad for God here today? Yeah. I'm thankful for him. I'm glad that one day the king decided to show up. But more than that, just what scripture tells us, I'm glad that when he showed up that he decided to stay. Amen. There's some people in your lives when they show up, you're glad that they stay. Hallelujah. God is one of those individuals for me. Victoria actually is one of those individuals for me. Hallelujah. I told people, I said I had to date a lot of crazy before I found this lady. Praise the Lord. I mean, I, I went through a lot of bad ones before I, I found the good one. Brother, do you feel that way? I'm sure this is the time for you to say, yeah, you're getting points here. Uh, this, this is the time. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for God and for what he did and how he decided to stay. Hallelujah. How he decided to come into my life. Praise the Lord. Victoria, get on up here to the piano. I'm trying to be nonchalant and fan. Yeah, I love you, honey. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for him here this morning. I know that if there's anything that you need in your life that he has the power to do it, and I know that he's here today because I can feel him here. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for God. You know, the enemy, it says that he'll keep coming around. The enemy can't stay if we don't invite him to stay. But he'll keep coming around. We keep running him off. But the thing that I like is that when he comes knocking on the door, is that Jesus Christ can answer. Jesus Christ can run him off. Jesus Christ can do those things that I can't do and those things that you can't do. But when Jesus answers the door, the devil hits the road. When Jesus answers the door, it doesn't matter what the problem is that comes along because I already have the answer. Amen. I already have the solution to that problem. There's a lot of problems that we face in our lives. There's a lot of problems that come up day to day. There's a lot of situations that needs handled. But the situation, the hallelujah, the, the solution has always been the same. And it's Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad for him here today? I want everybody just to bow your heads and to close your eyes and for us to pray right now. Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would make us stronger in you than we've ever been. Lord, help us to rely on you, Lord Father, when so many times we, we think I'm going to rely on myself, I'm going to rely on these other things, but we know that you're the one who can make it happen. Where you came down here to be for us, where you sent your son, God, down here to this earth to die for us, where you gave Amen. Hey.